N-acetylcysteine is a precursor to glutathione. And I mentioned it in my video about glutathione, that one way to increase your glutathione levels is to supplement with N-acetylcysteine. And that is preferable to supplementing directly with glutathione because glutathione's bioavailability absorption is very low. Most of it gets destroyed before it's really uh, taken up where you need it. Now, N-acetylcysteine, on the hand, uh, other hand, is taken up extremely well and it leads to a measurable increase in glutathione levels. So I think this is a very good way to get more glutathione. Why is glutathione important? Again, I mentioned this in the other video. Um, very important antioxidant. It's sort of the master antioxidant that your body has. It's a free radical scavenger. It's a heavy, heavy metal chelator. It has a lot of positive functions that can greatly contribute to our health. But in the context um, here of this video, I want to talk a bit about N-acetylcysteine and its role in uh, moody psychiatric disorders. We're talking about mood disorders. We're talking about um, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, and so on. And there are a lot of um, disorders where it's postulated that adding N-acetylcysteine, this supplement, can be very helpful with those disorders. Now, also, a lot of people are warning about uh, something called a blunted effect or flat effect. And that's something that can also happen when you take N-acetylcysteine regularly. So whenever we influence neurotransmitters whenever we influence mood whether it's uh, you know in a negative way the the uh, our negative moods turn to, uh, meaning depression or uh, elevated moods talking about uh, mania hypomania or even psychosis right whenever we modulate these moods there's a risk that we modulate them to the point where we can't shift between moods at all and we have this blunted flat affect and that's one of the uh, concerns people have when they take n-acetylcysteine but this paper I want to talk about is very interesting. This was actually uh, published in uh, 2011, and it's called N-acetylcysteine in Psychiatry, Current Therapeutic Evidence and Potential Mechanisms of Action. And here they, first of all, outline why is N-acetylcysteine so potent in influencing uh, mood or, or other psychiatric illnesses? How does it even happen that this thing, this supplement, reaches the brain and does all these things? And I think <laughs> that's actually a very good, good point, and we need to find out, you know, uh, what the mechanisms really are. But I think it's fantastic. I think this has a lot of potential. And when we think about uh, medications for mood, like psychiatric medications, they have a lot of side effects. It turns out that n in a supplement will probably have less side effects. It might also have less efficacy, of course, in certain things. But I think this is actually very promising and worth looking into. So in the beginning of this paper, the uh, most important thing here, they talk about uh, N-acetylcysteine's role in restoring glutathione. And as we mentioned before, this is very important. Glutathione, says here, is the primary endogenous antioxidant. Glutathione neutralizes reactive oxygen and nitrogen species from the cell through both direct and indirect scavenging. And that's important when we talk about brain health here. So they think that a lot of the issues we have in terms of uh, psychiatric disorders are uh, you know, dealing dealing with uh, inflammatory responses and oxidative um, species that can uh, uh, cause certain damages that might result in a mood disorder. So just like we have an issue with these um, uh, uh, oxidative species and inflammatory processes in <clears throat> the rest of our body, when we talk about diseases in the brain, according to the researchers here, we can link these to certain mood disorders. And so the role, again, here, one role, of course, is N-acetylcysteine being a precursor to, to glutathione. When we take N-acetylcysteine, we increase glutathione levels. Having more glutathione means we can neutralize more of these reactive oxygen species, and we can help the cell to have less inflammation. And we're talking about cells here. They talk about neurons. We talk about brain cells in this case, right? Um, they talk about that the oral administration, as I've talked about earlier, of glutathione alone does not adequately restore glutathione levels. And again, that's because the bioavailability is very low, right? It is rapidly hydrolyzed by the liver and intestines. And penetration, so penetration of glutathione through the blood-brain barrier is very poor. So glutathione doesn't get into your brain very well. Similarly, oral administration of L-cysteine, again, precursor of uh, glutathione, has also been shown to have little effect on brain, brain glutathione level um, uh, owing to first-pass metabolism. The first-pass metabolism is you, means you take an oral supplement, it goes into the bloodstream, and the uh, blood vessels where it enters in, in the small intestine first goes to the liver. So the first pass is through the liver, and the liver is a filter. And it destroys a lot of these compounds, and the liver is a detoxifier. 
It's very good at taking out toxins, but unfortunately, it's also very good at taking out certain nutrients. So not much gets into the bloodstream. That's why our administration here um, is pretty poor. So either of glutathione itself or of um, uh, cysteine, right? Um, N-acetylcysteine has been shown to successfully penetrate the blood-brain barrier and raise brain glutathione levels in animal models, which may be relevant to psychiatry, where alterations in brain glut glutathione and other redox pathways have been shown. So this, again, is, this might be helpful because we're getting N-acetylcysteine this way into the brain, and in the brain, N-acetylcysteine, just like in the body, can lead to increased level of levels of glutathione, which is a very positive thing when we think in this case of uh, diseases of the brain or psychiatric diseases in this case, right? Um, alterations in pro and inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines, including interleukin-6, so IL-6, IL-1, and TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha, have been reported in populations with depression and to a lesser extent uh, bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. These inflammatory cytokines are potential contributors to the underlying pathophysiology of these disorders. So again, they're establishing here that having these um, inflammatory cytokines or inflammatory markers present may be the underlying issue why the disease, in this case, schizophrenia and um, uh, other diseases of uh, other mood disorders may manifest, okay? They say further here that n acetylcysteine has been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties that are linked to oxidative pathways, which may provide another potential mechanism of action in the benefits of n acetylcysteine in psychiatry. So they're establishing that this gets into the brain extremely well, right? And again, in the brain, one n acetylcysteine is acting by itself, which we've talked about in tissues as well. So n acetylcysteine has active functions of its own, but it also leads to an increase in the production of glutathione, which we also know is another very potent uh, antioxidant, uh, again, heavy metal chelator, and so on. So aside from its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory uh, action that it has in general on the neurons of the brain, or on the whole body actually, and acetylcysteine can also have a direct effect on neurotransmission. And the authors talk about two neurotransmitters here specifically, and that's glutamate and dopamine. And both of those can be influenced, so the levels of these in the brain can be influenced by N-acetylcysteine, and by influencing levels of neurotransmitters, we know that we can influence um, a lot of psychiatric disorders. And we're going to get back to this, especially with the dopamine regulation, because that's going to be important for the adverse effect, as some people describe it, this blunting of affect, and that has to do with the uh, dopamine response, actually, right? So the authors write here, um, there is a growing body of literature exploring the use of n in the treatment of psychiatric illness. There is provisional evidence of the potential benefit of n in a wide range of disorders. Many of these disorders have limited treatment options or suboptimal outcomes with current treatments. And again, a lot of times, I guess, um, you know, psychiatrists, they will try different medications and go from one to the next. But there are many cases where medications don't work sufficiently or have too many side effects. And then the patient is kind of stuck. And here they're saying that there's a potential that N-acetylcysteine is an alternative uh, to some of these medications, especially when there's patients who have failed um, traditional medications. So I'm just going to briefly go through some of the disorders where the authors postulate that N-acetylcysteine could be useful as a treatment or an adjunct to an existing treatment. And that's addiction disorder, marijuana dependence, nicotine addiction, uh, cocaine addiction, pathological gambling, obsessive compulsive disorder, very interesting, trichotillomania and grooming disorder. So these are, you know, trichotillomanias where people are pulling out their hair and uh, grooming disorder. So it's sort of in the category of an obsessive compulsive disorder, but it can have some physical damage to the person, obviously, right? Schizophrenia, that's a very big one. We're talking here about um, hallucinations, delusions, um, you know, thinking that, uh, you know, like paranoia that someone is after, you know, all these kind of things is very disturbing. And when we look at um, the uh, homeless situation in the United States, a lot of um, homeless uh, people are unfortunately are infected by, uh, affected by schizophrenia. And there's a lot of uh, paranoia. There's a lot of um, hallucinations. People are talking to themselves. You might have observed this some people in the street. That's very sad. And if untreated, I mean, these people are very non-functional. They, they, they have a very hard time functioning in society, actually, right? And then uh, bipolar disorder. So you have both, you have elevated moods, which is uh, mania, manic moods, where people, they will gamble, they will spend a lot of money, they will do crazy things, they could be promiscuity and all these things, right? 
And on the other hand, there is uh, depression. So bipolar means having either an elevated mood that's too elevated and pathological that way, or it's really low, it's really depressed. So you have a depressive disorder at that point. And so bipolar kind of fluctuates between these two moods. So in the discussion, then the authors say here, N-acetylcysteine appears to be promising in the treatment of several psychiatric disorders. Many of the psychiatric disorders discussed here have shown only preliminary data regarding the efficacy of N-acetylcysteine in their treatment, and further research is required, of course. However, N-acetylcysteine appears to be a promising therapeutic agent and provides a window of treatment opportunity in a field where current treatments are limited or have remained suboptical. So again, very interesting. So um, I think the whole um, main point of this article that I'll bring out of is one that we have here a, a supplement that crosses the blood brain barrier very well, has an extremely positive effect on the neurons of our brains, so on the cells in our brain, because of its anti inflammatory and about uh, and antioxidant properties, but also it can directly influence neurotransmitters, right? And also, again, is has the effects are so profound that they may positively affect several psychiatric illnesses. And if we have a patient who has failed um, many uh, medical interventions or has too many side effects, then this is something that might be worth trying, of course, for the researchers needed. But this is a very um, safe alternative. The side effects are very low if you stay within the um, recommended doses here, I think. And it does have some other positive effects on the body because it is, again, not only an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory agent in the brain, but all over your body. So again, it... Uh, reconstitutes glutathione, which is very important for overall health. So I think this is very interesting. So again, these are positive effects, can positively influence certain psychiatric illnesses. But on the flip side, again, and that's what I started out with in this video, people have reported, hey, I don't have any psychiatric disorder or anything. I'm taking acetylcysteine because I want to boost my immune system. I take it during viral illnesses and whatnot. But I noticed that when I take it, I can't enjoy myself. I'm just really this very flat. I can't laugh, I can't cry, I'm kind of stuck in this very flat mood. And that's actually very interesting. So this flattening of affect, when you think of that, that is actually something that sometimes is a side effect of psychiatric medications. And this happens specifically when we block dopamine. Uh, now, blocking dopamine is something that medications do to treat conditions like schizophrenia, where there are um, symptoms like hallucinations or delusions. And when we block dopamine, people usually improve in terms of those symptoms. But what they have a lot of times after that, they just have a flat affect. This is like sort of this uh, zombie-like existence where, you know, people have this, they have no real uh, mood that you can discern from their face. There's like this flat affect as someone who's like, they're not able to smile, they're not able to cry, they're kind of in between, right? And I think to a lesser extent with N acetylcysteine, but N acetylcysteine seems to mimic that a little bit in some people, depending on the dose I would postulate. Now, a lot of people take it at fairly high doses, in my opinion, around 1,200 milligrams per day, which I think is a bit high. Now, if you have a viral illness, that might be a good level because you want to replenish your glutathione. But then people describe this sort of flattening of affect, and it does make sense. Again, think about it. You're taking this uh, N acetylcysteine to improve your production of glutathione, that's fantastic, that's good. So you have a positive improvement in your uh, viral disease, you're getting healthier quicker and so on. But at the same time, you don't seem to be able to enjoy yourself, you seem kind of flat, you're not really happy, you're not really sad, you're kind of stuck in between. So you don't feel quite yourself. So I think this is very much dose dependent. This is very anecdotal. I tried to really find good literature on it, but I couldn't. I couldn't find very good papers on this. You will find a lot of YouTube videos discussing this and that's fine, you know, people talk about this. Um, I would, as a take-home message from this, would say, look, this is a um, supplement, I think, that has a lot of value. I take it, especially when there's viral illness, if I'm down with a cold uh, or anything else, I I'll take n acetylcysteine. Um, I take it in small amounts, around 600 milligrams daily. Um, if I'm really sick, I might take 1,200 milligrams a day, but for short periods of time. Now, also, I don't think everybody will be affected by this in terms of getting this flat affect or blunting of mood, right? But there are some people that that might be. In that case, I would just decrease the dose. I think this is very transient. I think there's something to keep an eye on. Now, if you do take this and you find you're getting depressed, like where you're really getting into very negative moods, then of course I would stop it and talk to your uh, primary care doctor or your psychiatrist, whoever you're seeing, because that of course is quite concerning. But um, 
I wouldn't dismiss it as a very good supplement based on these anecdotes. And I do think that uh, not everybody will be affected by this. Again, this is these are reports. Again, I haven't found great literature, so I can't give you percentages in population that experience this really at this point. Uh, there might be something that I've been missing. If you have any additional information, please send it to me. I will definitely read that. Um, but I do think that N-acetylcysteine as a precursor of glutathione is fantastic. Again, I, <clears throat> as I mentioned in my glutathione video, I do regular shots or injections of, glut of glutathione, which is great. Then, you know, it bypasses the liver, so there's no first pass that filters out a lot of it, and it is pretty much available in the system. It doesn't go to the brain a lot this way, because remember, glutathione is not very good at crossing the blood-brain barrier. N-acetylcysteine is. And therefore, N-acetylcysteine will increase glutathione in your brain much more then actual glutathione supplementation, even with an intermuscular injection, will do. But I think I would continue to use it um, uh, for a certain part of the year. I will take an acetyl system, taking it currently, actually. I have not noticed the blunting of affect uh, that I'm aware of. Um, and again, that's something just to keep an eye on. But there is, uh, for some people, this is concerning. And if it is so, I think this, I hope, I hope this video will make you understand why that is. And again, to me, the solution would be to decrease your dose of it. Um, I even think that a lower dose of about 300 milligrams a day might be sufficient to help you with uh, generating sufficient amount of glutathione. You don't have to go even to 600. For me, 600 is fine. And again, if I'm actively sick, I, I will take 1,200 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine daily. So hopefully this was helpful. If you are taking N-acetylcysteine and have noticed any mood changes, I would love to hear about it. So please leave a comment uh, or question, and I will read those and would love to discuss those.